All right. Well, it's Saturday, August the 19th. It's National Honey Bee Day. And I'm actually getting to get back out to the hives. Um, it's been raining and pretty cool the last like week and a half, two weeks. And we've had temperatures, high 70s, to low 80s, tons of rain. And now in just the last couple of days, we're, we're dry and back into heat advisory ranges again. Um, I noticed when I got home last night that about 4 o'clock, when I was taking a peek at the hives, just and walking by them, every bee just about coming back in had bright yellow pollen sacks on them. Tons of pollen coming in. So now that it's dried out, um, things are in bloom. I'll add some of that video to this later so you can see it. But right now, it's close to noon. And you can see these bees are still bringing in a lot of nice bright yellow pollen. Well, the wind shifted from my smoker. It's starting to bother them coming in a little bit. But the bees that the smoke isn't bothering, you can see them landing with yellow pollen sacks. I also saw drone, drones coming back to the hive yesterday, so uh, there are still drones being produced, and they haven't been booted out for the year yet. Not as many as before, but there still are a lot. Oh, I just saw a second color, more of an orangish color pollen. That's the only bee I've seen with an orange pollen on it. Everything else has been bright yellow. You can probably see some smoke from my smoker blowing over here. Got the smoker behind the hive on a block. The wind's blowing it back. You see here and watch them come in. You'll notice how the bees, when they, when they come in, they almost go directly to the entrance and land and walk right in. If you're concerned about looking at your hive and not knowing if maybe it's being robbed because there's just a ton of bees at the entrance, if the bees are floating and hovering around kind of back and forth and looking like they're trying to figure out where the entrance is, that's a sign that those are bees that are not from that hive. You see how these bees just kind of go right at the entrance and land and just walk in a little bit? They're not landing far on the outside and making their way over to it. That's because they know exactly where that entrance is and this is their home. So even if you have a big cluster of bees around the front, if they're all landing like that and walking in, it's probably just orientation flights from uh, you know, newly merged bees that hive. And you can see these are coming, landing right down and going right in. This is a big enough entrance that they can actually fly into the entrance as they land, not have to stop on the outside and walk in. So there's enough in bloom right now to where, now generally, when bees start to forage, they'll spend a part of the day getting pollen and the other part of the day getting nectar just because you know as the sun comes out and heats everything up certain flowers open and close things will dry out but right now there's more than enough pollen to be gathered all day long and the only reason they're bringing that pollen in is because they have brood feed so that's a good sign that there's still a good amount of brood being laid inside of there so we're going to open all these hives up and take a look and see if any of them need any more uh, supers added to them and take a look at the pattern, the brood patterns and uh, just make sure everybody's looking okay. So this will be the first time in about, oh, at least three weeks. I'd have to go see when I took a peek at them last. But uh, the last time I took a video when I was out here and turned my three frame nukes into single hives, that's the last time I've opened these up and looked at them. I haven't had a need to, you know, until now. There's no, no point in it. So I'm going to go take a peek inside of all these and if I see anything interesting, I will uh, I'll let you see it as well. Thought I'd show you. So what I did the last time I was in here, I uh, alternated or checkerboarded drawn out frames with foundationless frames you can see there. I wanted to give them enough room to have room for all the bees and a space to build if they needed it to put stores in. But I didn't want to give them completely drawn out comb because if they couldn't fill it quick enough, it would just be a perfect place for hive beetles to just infest. And since we weren't back into full flow yet, I, I knew that would happen. So, as you can see, take this frame out. See from the markings, this is one of those... Uh, frames that was small cell foundation if you've seen any of the other videos earlier in the year you kind of know what that's all about and as you can see they are starting to store honey if you look at the wax 
you can see the that kind of darker yellow yellow colored that's the the uh, drawn comb I already put back into it to begin with the white stuff is the new wax they've drawn off of it you can see where they're starting to cap a little bit of the cured honey so what they've done is they've take this drawn foundation that I left them and once they started getting resources to make you know new honey and put it back into it or nectar and put back into it and then convert it to honey you can see where the new fresh wax is so they're starting to be able to fill these up same on this side starting to do the same thing so this new fresh white wax tells you there's there's nectar coming in and they're actually drawing the cells out more and then you no know, capping it so with all the rain we've gotten lately things are starting to bloom and there is nectar being available they're starting to store it So as you can see if it gets focus right. So you know this is the old original drawn I put into it. And the more white it gets, that's the brand new stuff that they're drawing. So what I'll do, and see since these are beside foundationless frames, what they might end up doing, rather than drawing those out, they may overdraw these. So see the drawn comb I put in the first place, it'd been drawn all the way out. Now that they're drawing more out past that, it's going to come past the frame. I'm sorry, it's hard to see the, my screen on my phone out here at the sun. But you uh, see how that's starting to come up past the side of the frame? So instead of making you know, 10 frames, they're drawing out the 5 that are empty. They may just end up taking these 5 frames and overdrawing them out on both sides, making them really thick and fat. And if that happens, they'll go into the voids of these other frames which since I'm going to let these get ready to overwinter I really don't care if they do that that's fine to me I'm, this is all just food for them if this was stuff I was going to actually extract you know I'd take steps to to get them to stop that or I'd just let them do it then after the wax is drawn out um, it's easier to uncap with a knife because the wax is so fat I would do that and I would put them all back in and rotate my foundation list back into it and get it drawn in the long run. But since it's already you know, mid-August and I'm trying to get them ready for the fall, I'm not going to worry so much about it. You know, if they take this wax and it gets drawn all the way over, over into this point in this frame and this one does the same over here, it's essentially going to be a full box whether it takes 5 frames or 10 frames to do it, so I'm not concerned about it. Um, you know, that's, that's part of doing foundationless this late in the year. It's not exactly prime wax drawing conditions. And I don't have these really cram packed and just forcing bees into space where they have to draw it out. So I'm just going to let them do what they want. You know? if it's easy, it is easier for them to take already drawn and just extend it out because they only have to build that little bit of wax rather than having to take a new foundationless frame and draw the entire complete frame out. So if that's quicker and easier for them to make sure that they get enough food for winter time, you know, let them do it. There's no point in forcing them to work harder than they have to just to survive. And then back when spring comes around, you know, I'll, I'll take care of it. So what I've done now is I took off that first box. I'm kind of curious to see what was underneath it. They're already storing more fresh nectar and turning it into honey in these outer frames. I was going through. I started running into frames. The brood. Cat brood. It's nice solid patterns of cat brood over here. Look down, I can see the bees in between the next box down. The frames are kind of packed in. I'm not concerned about this being queenless. I haven't seen any eggs yet because I just now got into some brood. But from the temperament of the hive, it's nice and calm and relaxed. I haven't had a single bee buzz me. It could care less that I'm here. They're busy bringing in you know, resources. I see lots of cat, uh, cat brood. I'm confident there's a queen in it just from their, their temperament. So there is absolutely no reason for me to go look any deeper or any more over to the right. I've got brood. I'm confident there's a queen in it from the behavior. 
They're putting away stores. My inspection's done. There's absolutely no reason to go and keep working down through boxes and disturb them and break everything up. So I'm just going to slide these frames over. There's plenty of room left up here for them to work. Seal up the hive and go take a look at the other ones. So th this is my whole inspection right now and uh, everything looks good. Well, as I'm going through hives here, I came across a situation that I was afraid might happen. But luckily it's only been in one hive so far. Um, since I haven't been able to get out of here for three plus weeks after I did these, uh, between there being a lot of storms and cold weather and uh, hurting my back to where I, I physically couldn't get out here and do this, I had one of these hives who had a really good laying queen. She really filled this box out and they really needed to have another box weeks ago. And it looks like they've become crowded enough that the queen swarmed and they left me a lot of swarm cells behind. Take a look at this. Two, three, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Let me get my frame grippers here so I can actually hold on to it and I'll show you. Doing the cyber side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, so I'm pretty confident that these are actual swarm cells and not supersedure cells. Not so much because of where they are in the frame. You know, some people say supersedures are only at the top. That's not the case. It's more of where they have, you know, usable eggs to deal with. But to have this many, and you can tell they've been staggered a little bit by the way the, uh, the wax on the ends look. They weren't all capped at the exact same time. They're spread apart a little bit. I went through my hive twice and didn't find a queen at all. No new eggs at all. Everything's cat brood. So, and it's still pretty packed with bees. If I had a failing queen that they started to supersede, I would have found her or some trace of eggs. There is a chance that she could have just died suddenly on them, and these could be replacement queens, except when I went through all my frames. There are nice solid brood patterns in all the frames. There was no place that looked like she was laying and it just suddenly shot, stopped or got a, a uh, what do you call it, a buckshot kind of pattern. And there's nothing sporadic. It's real nice and clean looking. I would have expected to found a nice healthy queen inside of it, but I didn't and I found these. And being that it's this late in August, this isn't the time to be making um, New hives, really, in my area anyway. Even if those hatch tomorrow, I mean, you're looking at, what, close to 50 days or so? 40 to 50 days before you have new brood hatching and the way it goes up here. It always takes my queens a couple of weeks extra, it seems like. So you're looking at mid to late September before they even start laying brood and getting new things hatched out. That's pretty late in the year. So what I'm going to do, normally I would just go ahead and, and bust this all up, spread these resources to ever hives and call it quits for this time of year. I'm going to go ahead and let them try to hatch a queen out and see if she can get mated even though there's not a lot of drones around right now. And if on the off chance that she does get mated and come back and lays a little bit, you never know, I might have another queen in a decent hive that could die, you know, I could accidentally squish one and not know it, I mean you never know. So if she comes back, that gives me an extra laying queen that I could theoretically drop into a hive that's, you know, productive right now, and there wouldn't be that much of a dip in, uh, you know, in brood production. I don't really expect him to make it back, but hey, you know, I'll let it, you know, I'll give it a try. I may call a few people I know, and if they're just really desperate to try to get a virgin queen and see if they can get it mated, I'll let them take a stab at a few of them. I mean, I obviously don't need that many queens. I'd leave, you know, two or three in this in this hive and just 
You know, that way out of those three, one of them should hatch and be okay. You know, so we'll give it a shot just to see what happens. But most likely you can call this hive gone for the year. And um, I'll let the, the bees that are in it right now, they're bringing in pollen and, and nectar. So I'll go ahead and just let them do it. There's more than enough bees in there to where I don't have to worry about it getting taken over by hive beetles or wax moths. So worst case scenario, you know, queen doesn't make it back. These, bill, these bees fill out all these frames. And I'll just take these frames and spread them out amongst other hives as, you know, extra resources. So I'll go ahead and let them continue to work because once the rest of this brood hatches, there's no work for the nurse bees to really do. And basically every bee that's left inside this hive will turn into foragers. And, uh, you know, other than the bees that are receiving the nectar when they come back and trying to cure honey. So we'll turn this more into a, uh, a resource building box to give the other hives for winter. And if we happen to get a queen, we do. And if we don't, that's pretty much what we're planning on. So that's what's going on with that one. I still haven't looked in this last hive. It's the last one to go. Everything else out here looks good. That one in the middle, it was empty. It started to get just a tiny bit of wax moth damage. I pulled the frames out and I gave it to a couple stronger hives to clean it up and take care of it. But other than that, right now, out of the 11, let's see, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, the 11 hives we had out here. Right now we have nine solid hives, assuming that this one's okay when I check it. And this is our number 10. It's a maybe hive, because you never know. <clears throat> well, well, I'm done going through all my hives. Got a little hot, took a little break. Went to get some uh, wire out of my trailer. Apparently I disturbed a wasp nest and got hit in the finger in the back by a wasp and got all that taken care of. I decided this frame with all the extra queen cells. I thought I'd just go ahead and play around with it. Try to make some little queen cages out of some my extra number 8 wire. Just cut some little slivers and rolled it up around my pinky finger. Tucked in the ends over. Let's get this to focus better. There we go. Rolled it up. Around my pinky. Cut two slits in it and I took one on each end and folded it over. I left this one and I bent it up to kind of have a little hand to hold it with. Took an extra little piece and shoved it through into the bottom. And I'm going to try to slide that up over the some of the queen cells that are more on their own. And uh, just play around just to see if I can actually get virgin queens to merge and you know, get caught inside of them that way I can come out here and get a hold of them so I'll, I'll play around with it we'll just see how it goes it's been a few hours since I uh, sealed up the hives I was making those little uh, metal screens to put around the, the uh, queen cells in that one frame but a lot of them were just so close together it wasn't worth it I kept trying to put them in and they were so close to each other that I'd risk damaging the other queen cells. So I just stopped and I uh, put a message up on our local club's Facebook page to uh, get a hold of me if anybody wanted some queen cells. And I just cut them out and stick them in their nukes form if they want to bring them over to my house tomorrow. And uh, I'll just leave it at that. And if nobody takes them, first queen out wins. She'll just go and kill the rest of them because I really don't want to fight with anything like that this time of year. And, uh, you know, I, earlier I showed you we had the one hive there's nothing in. I just threw some extra stuff, uh, stuff over there for now. I'll clean it up tomorrow because heat index out here is over 100 already and I'm, I'm pretty much done. And that's where we're going to leave everything. If it seems like we're starting to get a fall flow on, I'll give them a few weeks and I'll take a peek back inside and see who's filling up the boxes where and you know what hives need more frames and you know and so on. So as far as that goes, we're done looking in hives until at least September. And uh, that's about it for now.